I supported my husband's dream restaurant for years, then he replaced me with his 24-year-old mistress. I uncovered his fraud scheme and got my revenge. I never thought I'd be in this situation, but here I am, feeling lost and betrayed. I'm Laura, Tinty White F, and I've been married to Nick, 30M, for three years now. We met during our final year of college, and it feels like a lifetime ago. I was a marketing major, always buried in books about consumer behavior and brand strategy. Nick was studying business management, with dreams of opening his own restaurant someday. We first crossed paths at a campus job fair. I was manning the booth for the marketing club, and Nick stopped by. Not for the marketing, but because we were giving out free pizza. We got to talking, and I was immediately drawn to his charm and ambition. He had this way of talking about his restaurant dreams that made you believe they were already reality. Our relationship started slowly. We'd bump into each other at the campus coffee shop, chat about our classes, and eventually started studying together. Nick would bring homemade snacks, his own recipes he was experimenting with, and I'd help him with his marketing assignments. It felt natural, like we complemented each other perfectly. After graduation, I landed a job at a local marketing firm. It wasn't glamorous, mostly working on campaigns for small businesses, but I loved the challenge of it. Nick, on the other hand, struggled to find his footing. His family had some connections in the food industry, but not enough to hand him a restaurant on a silver platter. He bounced between kitchen jobs, always feeling undervalued and frustrated. Those first couple of years were tough. Nick worked long hours for little pay, coming home exhausted and often discouraged. I did my best to support him, both emotionally and financially. I picked up freelance work on the side, designing logos and managing social media accounts for extra cash. We lived in a tiny apartment, pinching pennies and dreaming of the day Nick would have his own place. Finally, after countless rejections and setbacks, Nick got his break. A small, failing cafe came up for sale in a decent location. The price was still steep for us, but with help from Nick's parents and every penny we had saved, we managed to scrape together enough for a down payment. I still remember the day we got the keys. Nick was like a kid on Christmas morning, already planning menu items and decor. The first year of the restaurant was a whirlwind. Nick worked insane hours, often sleeping on a cot in the back office. I kept my day job but spent every evening and weekend at the restaurant, waiting tables, managing the books, whatever needed to be done. It was exhausting, but we were in it together, and that made it bearable. Slowly but surely, things started to turn around. Nick's innovative menu items began drawing attention. A food blogger wrote a glowing review, and suddenly we had lines out the door. It was exciting, but also terrifying. We were barely keeping up with demand. As the restaurant's success grew, Nick suggested I quit my job and come work with him full-time as the marketing manager. He argued that with my skills, we could take the place to the next level. I was hesitant at first. I loved my job at the marketing firm, and I had just been promoted to senior account manager. Plus, I worried about putting all our eggs in one basket. But Nick was persistent. He painted this picture of us working side by side, building our empire together. He said things like, imagine being able to put all your creative energy into our own business instead of someone else's. After weeks of discussion and some sleepless nights, I agreed to give it a try. For the first few months, everything seemed perfect. I threw myself into my new role, revamping our social media presence, planning events, and reaching out to local media. Nick and I were spending more time together than we had in years, and it felt like we were finally living our dream. But then, things started to change. It was subtle at first. Nick questioning my decisions, making small changes to my work without telling me. I brushed it off as normal growing pains as we adjusted to our new dynamic, but it got worse. He began criticizing my ideas in front of the staff, dismissing my suggestions in meetings. <clears throat> I tried to talk to him about it, but he always had an excuse. He was stressed about the new expansion plans. He was worried about the increased competition in the area. He just wanted everything to be perfect. I did my best to be understanding, to work harder and prove my worth. The situation came to a head last week during our monthly staff meeting. Nick stood up and announced that he had hired a new marketing manager, Sarah, 
24F. I sat there, completely blindsided, as he introduced her to everyone and praised her qualifications. The room felt like it was spinning. How could he do this without even discussing it with me? After the meeting, I confronted Nick in his office. I demanded to know why he had hired someone to replace me without even talking to me about it. His response left me cold. Laura, let's be honest. You're not cut out for this job. I only hired you because you're my wife, but the restaurant needs someone with real talent now. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. All those late nights, the sacrifices I'd made, the support I'd given him, it all meant nothing. I walked out of his office in a daze, unsure of what to do next. That night at home, I tried to talk to Nick again. I wanted to understand why he thought I wasn't good enough, why he hadn't communicated his concerns earlier. But he just got angry, accusing me of being dramatic and not understanding the pressures of running a business. He brought up every small mistake I'd made over the past few months, blowing them out of proportion and using them to justify his decision. As I sat there listening to him tear apart my work and my confidence, I couldn't help but think back to our college days. The Nick I fell in love with would never have treated me this way. He would have valued my input, worked with me to improve things if he wasn't happy. What happened to the partner who used to say we were a team? Now, I'm sitting here in our guest room, writing this post and wondering how things went so wrong. I gave up my career to support Nick's dream, and this is how he repays me. I feel used, betrayed, and completely lost. The restaurant has been my life for the past year, and the thought of not being there every day is terrifying. But how can I continue to work in a place where I'm clearly not wanted or respected? I'm also scared of what this means for our marriage. If Nick can treat me this way at work, what does that say about how he values me as a wife? Has success changed him so much, or was this side of him always there, just waiting for the right moment to surface? I need advice. Am I overreacting? Should I try to prove myself to Nick and keep working at the restaurant? Or is this a sign that our relationship has deeper problems? I'm torn between my love for Nick, the years we've invested in this relationship and business, and the feeling that I've lost myself in trying to support his dreams. How do I even begin to untangle this mess? Update 1. It's been two weeks since my last post, and I want to thank everyone for their support and advice. Your comments really helped me gain perspective on my situation and gave me the courage to take some difficult steps. After much reflection, I decided to take a step back from the restaurant. I told Nick I needed some time off to think about everything. His reaction was not what I expected. Instead of being understanding or trying to work things out, he got defensive and angry. He accused me of abandoning him in the business when he needed me most, saying things like, so this is how you repay me for giving you a job? By walking out when things get tough? His response made me realize that the problem ran deeper than just work issues. I started paying more attention to Nick's behavior at home and noticed patterns I'd previously overlooked. He was often dismissive of my opinions, made decisions without consulting me, and seemed more interested in his phone than in spending time with me. One evening, while Nick was in the shower, I did something I'm not proud of. I checked his phone. What I found confirmed my worst fears. There were flirty text messages between Nick and Sarah, the new marketing manager. They had been exchanging messages late at night, discussing not just work, but personal matters too. There were even plans for dinner and drinks to discuss marketing strategies. I felt sick to my stomach. Not only had Nick replaced me at work, but it seemed he was also replacing me in his personal life. I confronted him as soon as he got out of the shower. At first, he tried to deny it, saying I was misinterpreting things. But when I showed him the messages, his demeanor changed. Nick admitted that he and Sarah had been growing close over the past month. He said he hadn't meant for it to happen, but he felt a connection with her that he no longer felt with me. He claimed that our relationship had become stale and that I no longer understood his ambitions. I was devastated. All those years of support and sacrifice meant nothing to him. I packed a bag and left that night, staying with my best friend, Emma, 29F. Emma and I have been friends since high school and she's been my rock through all of this. She let me cry on her shoulder and helped me start to process everything that had happened. 
The next day, I contacted a lawyer to discuss my options. As I sat in the lawyer's office explaining my situation, I couldn't help but think about how Nick and I used to talk about growing old together, running our restaurant empire side by side. It felt like a lifetime ago. Over the next week, I discovered more about Nick's betrayal. Several of the restaurant staff reached out to me, expressing their support. They revealed that Nick had been openly flirting with Sarah at work, often undermining my work in front of her. Some even suspected that Sarah was hired specifically to replace me. One of the waitresses, Jen, who's been with us since we opened, told me that Nick had changed a lot in recent months. She said he'd become arrogant and dismissive, not just to me, but to all the staff. It was like success had gone to his head, and he'd forgotten all the people who helped him get there. And I also learned that Nick had been making major business decisions without my knowledge, despite my role in the company. He had taken out loans and signed contracts that I knew nothing about. It became clear that he had been planning to push me out for a while. As I processed all this information, I couldn't help but reflect on our journey together. I remembered the nights we stayed up late, brainstorming menu ideas and marketing strategies. I thought about the times I'd massaged his shoulders after a long day in the kitchen, assuring him that all his hard work would pay off someday. How could he forget all of that? Now, I'm in the process of filing for divorce. It's painful and scary, but I know it's the right decision. I've realized that I deserve better than someone who would betray me both professionally and personally. I'm also exploring my legal options regarding the restaurant. Since I contributed significantly to its success and was officially employed there, my lawyer believes I have a strong case for compensation. It's not about the money, really. It's about recognizing the years of work and support I put into building Nick's dream. This experience has been a harsh wake-up call, but it's also shown me my own strength. I'm rediscovering who I am outside of Nick's shadow, and I'm determined to rebuild my life on my own terms. Emma has been encouraging me to reconnect with old friends and pursue hobbies I'd given up when the restaurant became all-consuming. Last weekend, she dragged me to a pottery class, something I'd always wanted to try but never found the time for. As I sat at the wheel, hands covered in clay, I felt a small spark of joy for the first time in weeks. I've also started looking into job opportunities. My old boss at the marketing firm reached out after hearing what happened. News travels fast in a small town. She said they'd be happy to have me back if I wanted. It's comforting to know I have options, that my career didn't end when I left to work at the restaurant. As I navigate this new reality, I'm trying to focus on the future rather than dwelling on the past. It's not easy. There are moments when I miss Nick, or at least the person I thought he was. But then I remember how he treated me, how easily he discarded our years together, and I know I'm making the right choice. I'm taking things one day at a time, allowing myself to grieve the loss of my marriage and the dreams we shared, but also trying to stay open to new possibilities. I don't know what the future holds, but for the first time in a long time, I feel like I'm in control of my own story. Update two. It's been a month since my last update, and I wanted to share some developments in my situation. The divorce proceedings are underway, and it's been a challenging process. Nick initially tried to contest the divorce, claiming that I was overreacting and that we could work things out. He even showed up at Emma's place one night, begging me to come home. It was hard to see him like that, but I reminded myself of how he'd treated me and stood my ground. When Nick realized I was serious and that I had evidence of his affair with Sarah, he changed his tune. Now he's trying to paint himself as the victim. He's telling friends and family that I abandoned him in the business when things got tough. He's even claiming that his relationship with Sarah only started after I left. Thankfully, I have text messages and statements from staff members that prove otherwise. Jen, the waitress I mentioned before, has been particularly helpful. She's provided a written statement about Nick's behavior at work, including specific instances of him undermining me and flirting with Sarah. The most shocking development came when I met with our accountant, Tom, to discuss the restaurant's finances as part of the divorce proceedings. Tom has been with us since we opened the restaurant. He's a quiet, meticulous man who I always trusted to keep our books in order. When we sat down to go over the financials, Tom seemed nervous. He kept fidgeting with his pen and avoiding eye contact. 
Finally, he took a deep breath and said, Laura, there's something you need to know. What Tom revealed left me speechless. Apparently, Nick had been mismanaging the restaurant's funds for months. He had been inflating the restaurant's profits to secure larger loans, which he then used to finance a lavish lifestyle. Expensive cars, designer clothes, and frequent business trips that were actually vacations with Sarah. Tom showed me doctored invoices and bank statements. He admitted that Nick had pressured him to manipulate the books, threatening to fire him if he didn't comply. Tom apologized profusely for not coming to me sooner, but said he was afraid of losing his job. This discovery has turned the divorce proceedings into a much more complex legal battle. My lawyer is now pushing for a forensic audit of the restaurant's finances. We're also considering involving the authorities, as some of Nick's actions may be considered fraud. I feel like I'm living in some kind of nightmare. The Nick I thought I knew would never have done something like this. I keep thinking back to the early days of our relationship, trying to see if there were signs I missed. Was he always capable of this level of deception? Or did success corrupt him? On a personal note, I've been focusing on rebuilding my life. I've moved into my own apartment, a small sunny place that's all mine. It's strange living alone after all these years, but also freeing. I've been enjoying simple things like choosing my own decor and not having to compromise on what to watch on TV. <laughs> I've started applying for marketing positions at other companies. The idea of working for someone else's business instead of our own is both daunting and exciting. I'm nervous about interviews, about having to explain why I left my last job, but I'm also looking forward to new challenges. The support from friends and family has been overwhelming. Emma, in particular, has been my rock through all of this. She comes over with ice cream and bad movies on the nights when everything feels too hard. My parents, who live a few hours away, have been calling every day to check on me. They've offered to let me move back home, but I feel like I need to stand on my own two feet right now. I've also reconnected with some of my old colleagues from the marketing firm where I used to work. We met up for drinks last week, and it was refreshing to talk about work and life with people who knew me before I was Nick's wife or the restaurant owner. They were shocked to hear about what happened and have been incredibly supportive. My former boss even offered me a position back at the firm, which I'm seriously considering. The idea of returning to familiar territory is tempting, but I'm also wondering if this might be an opportunity to try something completely new. This experience has taught me a lot about self-worth and the importance of maintaining my own identity in a relationship. While it's painful to see the life I thought I had crumble, I'm also excited about the possibilities that lie ahead. I'm taking things one day at a time, focusing on healing and rediscovering myself. Some days are harder than others, there are moments when I miss the life I had, the future I thought I was building. But then I remind myself of what that life had become. The disrespect, the betrayal, the lies, and I know I'm better off on my own. Update three. It's been three months since my last update, and I wanted to share some final thoughts on this chapter of my life. The divorce is now finalized. The legal battle was intense, especially given the financial irregularities we uncovered at the restaurant. In the end, the court ruled in my favor on several key points. I was awarded a significant settlement, including a percentage of the restaurant's value, acknowledging my contributions to its success. Nick's mismanagement of the restaurant's finances had serious consequences. The authorities got involved, and he's now facing legal charges for fraud. It's been difficult to watch someone I once loved go through this, but I remind myself that he brought it upon himself. The restaurant has been placed under a new management and I've relinquished any involvement with it. It's bittersweet to see something I put so much into slip away, but I know it's for the best. I still can't drive past it without feeling a mix of pride and pain. Pride for what we built and pain for how it all fell apart. As for my career, I decided to accept the position at my old marketing firm. Returning to a familiar environment with supportive colleagues has been incredibly healing. My first day back, I was greeted with a welcome back party, complete with my favorite cupcakes from the bakery down the street. It felt good to be valued and appreciated again. I'm rediscovering my passion for marketing and enjoying the challenge of new projects. Recently, I've been working on a campaign for a local animal shelter. It's rewarding to use my skills to help a cause I care about. 
something I'd lost sight of when the restaurant consumed my life. Nick and Sarah's relationship didn't last long once the truth came out. Last I heard, Sarah had quit the restaurant and moved to another city. I try not to think about them too much, but sometimes I wonder if Sarah realized what she got herself into, or if Nick treated her the same way he treated me in the end. Nick has been trying to reach out and apologize. He left a voicemail last week, his voice breaking as he said he realized what he'd thrown away. Part of me wanted to call him back, to hear him out. But I've realized that his actions showed his true character, and I deserve better. I deleted the voicemail and blocked his number. This experience has been a difficult but valuable lesson. I've learned the importance of maintaining my independence, both financially and emotionally. I've also learned to trust my instincts and not ignore red flags in a relationship. I'm focusing on personal growth now. I've started taking classes in digital marketing to enhance my skills. The industry moves so fast and it's exciting to be learning new things again. I've also picked up painting as a hobby, something I always wanted to do but never made time for when I was with Nick. Every Saturday morning, I set up my easel by the window in my apartment and lose myself in colors and shapes for a few hours. My relationships with friends and family have grown stronger through this ordeal. Emma and I have a standing Friday night dinner date where we try new recipes and talk about everything and nothing. My parents visited last month and it was nice to show them that I'm doing okay on my own. My dad even joked that my new apartment is cleaner than any place I lived with Nick. While I wouldn't wish this experience on anyone, I'm grateful for the strength and self-awareness it has given me. There are still days when I feel angry or sad about what happened, but those days are becoming fewer and farther between. More often, I find myself looking forward to the future with optimism, excited to see where this new chapter of my life will lead. To anyone going through a similar situation, remember, you are stronger than you think, and it's never too late to stand up for yourself and reclaim your life. Trust yourself, surround yourself with supportive people, and don't be afraid to start over. The journey might be tough, but you'll come out stronger on the other side. Thank you to everyone who supported me through this journey. Your advice and encouragement made a world of difference. Here's to new beginnings and the adventures that lie ahead.